We've seen that not all compounds that have a chirality center are chiral. Think meso compounds. For instance, this compound here has inversion symmetry. And having inversion symmetry makes it meso. So it's not such a stretch of the imagination that a compound can have no chiral carbons and still be chiral. One example is atrope isomers. S binap and R binap. These two bicyclic systems are rotation restricted. That is, they can't rotate freely around each other. So you've got this configuration or this configuration. They're mirror images and not superimposable. Therefore, the molecule is chiral, and they don't exchange with each other. Allenes are another example of compounds that can be chiral without having a chirality center. And an allene contains a carbon, a central carbon, that has a double bond on both sides of it. With four R groups. Now, these are chiral when the R groups on each of the peripheral carbons are mismatched. So as long as you have a mismatch here and a mismatch here, you can have a chiral allene. Another thing to point out is that the four R groups are not coplanar. And the reason for that is the central carbon is sp hybridized. The unhybridized p orbital that forms the pi bond on the right hand side of the molecule is in the vertical plane, and it overlaps with one in the vertical plane here, making it so that one of the R groups is coming towards you and the other one is going away from you. For the other pi bond, it has to come from a different p orbital on the central carbon, one that is in the horizontal plane. And that makes these R groups be flat on the paper instead of 3D. And this is the reason that these molecules can be chiral. And actually, um, these R groups point to the corners of an elongated tetrahedron. Here's one allene. And so if we number it, one, two, three, four, five. The parent chain is two, three, pentadiene, right, diene for the two double bonds. Now, it is not superimposable with its mirror image. So here is the mirror image. If we do a 90 degree rotation around the central bond axis, that will put this methyl group down into the left and it'll superimpose with this methyl group. So this methyl group will superimpose over here and this hydrogen will superimpose over here. But by doing that, on the right hand side of the molecule, we would put the hydrogen on a wedge and the methyl on a dash. So we have to have a way of designating these two non-superimposable mirror images, right? And non-superimposable mirror images are enantiomers. So here's what you do. It's kind of the same way you designate a chirality center, okay? So look on the side of the molecule that has the 3D bonds. The higher priority R group there is priority A, and the lower priority is D. And then on the other side of the molecule where you have the flat bonds, the higher priority is B and the lower priority is C. And then you just go ABC, that looks clockwise with the lowest priority group on a dash. That means the molecule on the left is R, 
2,3-pentadiene. That must mean the molecule on the right is S. Let's double check. So we start out here. This is priority A. The hydrogen's priority D. And again, highest and lowest priority just because these are the ones on the 3D bonds. And then over here we've got B and C. And if we go ABC, that's counterclockwise with the lowest priority group on a dash. That means the one on the right is S23 pentadiene. Here's an exercise for you to try. I'll give you a hint, number from right to left to give the pi bonds the lowest possible locants. And then you'll see that the parent chain is 2,3-hexadiene, and then you just have to get the substituents, and you have to get the stereochemistry right. Pause your video, work the problem, then resume to see the answer. So the parent chain is 2, 3, hexadiene, and there is a methyl group on carbon number 4. Right, that's right here. And now we just need to know whether it's R or S. So, we go to the side of the molecule that has the 3D bonds, we prioritize the higher one as A, and the lower one as D. Then we go to the side that has the flat bonds, the higher one is B, and the lower one is C. Then we draw our curved arrow, ABC. That is counterclockwise with our lowest priority group on a dash. Wow, I need to draw out my little table. So when our lowest priority group, sorry, our lowest priority group here is on a wedge, that's the hydrogen. When our lowest priority group is on a dash, then clockwise is R, counterclockwise is S. And it's opposite when my lowest priority group is on a dash, so clockwise would be S, and counterclockwise would be R. Here we're counterclockwise with the lowest priority group on a wedge. So it's R. So R, 4-methyl, 2,3-hexadiene.